people don't even know there's a house here because it's like a hill and you really can't see it unless you know where the door is and stuff. Cassie? So it's kind of integrated into the earth, right? We call it earth integrated, yeah. Some people build a square box and they shove it into a hill. But that's not really the same thing. Like this is a whole different shape, right? We call this house earth integrated rather than underground. Because underground connotes dark and no lights. And this one is integrated into the earth. Now it's like a bird cage. So you need it needs to be, you know, down in a little bit. Why don't we make it lower and then you can just sit down on So earth integrated. Earth integrated. It's so it's kind of integrated into the earth. And as long as it's, you know, twelve to fourteen inches, which is what the neck on all these rooms are, then it's below the frost line. So so what are we looking at? Lots of bubbles. Well, we took the right. top off a hill and we okay. built this house and then we covered it up again. Uh, I mean, walking on your roof, you're okay? <laughs> no, we, were, we had probably 100 people up there. It's really, and it supports a lot of Yes. Ways. It does, okay. Yeah. yeah, the shape is itself. It's like an eggshell, you know, you can't yeah. break an eggshell. You can't shape. break a whole egg by squeezing it. So we're walking on the roof, yeah. And you can look down into all the rooms, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. So you, you, these are all skylights, then? These are all skylights, yes. There's 6,000 acres here that were bought in the 30s by a group of friends. So we, we were expropriated. We had to find some place to live. My parents wanted to invest in some property with a view. So my dad got topographical maps and he followed the ridge because he figured on the ridge, this is like the last push of the glacier. It's called the terminal moraine. So he figured any place on a ridge would have a good view. My feet aren't very hardened up yet. And he said, oh, you got to come and check this out. You can't afford it, but it's amazing. Um, just imagining the rest. I mean, this, I, the, the part I can see is beautiful. Yeah, it's kind of neat. Those are big wind ventilators. When it's really windy, they, you know, bring fresh air into the house. Well, when we bought the property, we lived in a little chalet that's just down the driveway, which is a prefab. And the only thing that got hot in the winter was the hydrometer going around. And Bill said, we got to get Underground. <laughs> is this the only place that has windows, exterior windows? Um, come on, come on and see. Okay. Cassie? Oh, it's so cool in here. That's the point, right? Like, once you're, once you're below the frost line, which is just 12 to 14 inches. It's a constant temperature, about, you know, 58, 59 degrees. So it's, it feels cool in the summer and warm. In the winter, you only have to heat that differential. If it's 40 below, it doesn't matter. Like this room gets more exposure to outside, but these rooms are really, this is where your feet were. Yeah, so this is where you look down. Wow. On the roof. This feels so nice that it's that's so rounded. It feels so good. Yeah, it feels like you want to stand up straight because it's it's not a box, right? It's more cathedral-like or whatever. I mean, it's just the feeling of height it gives you. And so light for being underground. Well, that was the point. We wanted to make sure that it was, you know, not because people say you live underground, it's dark. But it's, the building, of course, is made with what we call ferro-concrete. So the, sh the shell was done in steel. And then they put on this expanded metal, which is like not as wide a space. It's like a mesh. Okay. And then started blowing on concrete. So the walls are like two to four inches thick. 
And then we put this white powdered marble. It's natural marble. You buy it as a powder, as a dust, and put an adhesive in it, and then we trowel that on the whole thing. So it's quite luminescent, but also bright. And you know, you do get a lot more light from above than from a side window, because that's where the sun is, and the sky is. And these windows on the side, you're getting bounced, kind of reflected light. So it's, it, the skylight is much more effective than a side. I, yeah, it yeah. gives you more light, for sure. You know, so it's not at all dark in here. In fact, you know, my bedroom, you can see through there, is darker because I've got a skylight cover on it. We built all these domes and then put a rubber membrane over the whole thing. And you did the work yourselves? Bill and the kids, basically. And then here we had to cut out the membrane to let the light in. I mean, you know, we had good advisors, plumbers and, you know, because everything's in the walls, right? It's not like the heating system is in the floor, so it's warm floors in the winter. So it's radiant heat because it rises, so there's no blowers and fans and... Oh, sure. You can go on top of it? You can move it up higher if you want to do trapeze. So is it difficult to build in the round because you have, I mean, all the furniture is just built in? Everything has to be built in. Like you can't buy anything, right? Like these, these, the bottom shelf is really deep and the top shelf gets progressively narrower because you're following the contour of the wall. He didn't want to put a square fridge in here, so he designed this refrigerator, which I mean, refrigerators have never been redesigned since the ice box, right? They're still a box. But cold air is heavy and it sinks. And every time you open a fridge door, the cold air spills out. And when you want the stuff that's way at the back, the fridge runs for a long time after you close the door to get back to the temperature. This way you can lift up the contents and the cold air stays down there. The cold air is not gonna be able to get up here. Now we're, heavy, yeah. we're getting a little bit of chill just from the you know the crockery and stuff but so it's a much more efficient refrigeration actually and then of course it's narrow he says so you can find stuff so like <laughs> you can find the mayonnaise you, you can find the knees on you don't have to get down on your hands and knees there's no back of the refrigerator <laughs> right so yep. how is this uh, how are you able to bring it up and down is it's there... pneumatic yeah he redesigned it with a different kind of a drive, like some kind of a gear thing. But this was the prototype and this is what we have. So guess where the refrigerator is, Well, you can guess now, right? <laughs> Just push a button, step on a lever actually, and the fridge pops up. Isn't that cool? Check it out. Yeah, and you can feel it's cold. And then if you look down there, Yes. Well, that, that's the cool, like the, the right. coils are around the outside, but uh, Tabasco sauce leaked, but I have to get my scooper and my decoffin. So once every day, or depend how much you use it, the compressor just fills up with air again to be able to lift the fridge up. Actually, nope. It doesn't seem to ever frost up, so that's good, <laughs> like you don't have to defrost it. This is, was supposed to be the freezer, but really it's just garbage. <laughs> And then this is the compost, so you just, you know, make your salad, wash it here, ch -ch -ch. compost, finished product. And we had to think about putting the chimney in here and, you know, I had to think it all out. And then this is so, what, used to be the guest room, now Jordy, my son, is moving in here, so he's, he's moved in a couple of car loads already. <laughs> and there's a poster there of a concept Bill had. It's a self-sufficient living system with 36 housing units. And then there's one acre in the middle that's communal, but it's all covered. So in the Arctic, it's perfect. This is a little dining dome we have too. That's, you know, he had a concept to make these buildings. You need to get a building permit for anything over 100 square feet. So this is just exactly 100 square feet or 99 point whatever. Nothing square anyway, it's all round. So this is another dining area that we have that's, it's all screened in. But it's, you know, round table's nice because everybody can talk to each other and can pass the food around easily. And so if you want it to be outdoors or... It's only uh, for summer, okay. yeah, yeah. But it's not usable huh. in the winter. Just... 
Oh, I love this. You, do you manage to find a rounded couch? And that can't be easy. Actually, usually both of those halves are facing the little fireplace in the winter. And that fireplace is so great because it gets like blue when it's really hot. Oh, does it really? It just emanates heat. Around the fireplace. Now remember, Ness? So this, this is like the main living room. When I realized that we weren't going to travel the winter that he died, I suggested we put a fireplace in here. I can take it down in the summer if we need the space for a big dance or something. <laughs> but it just clicks out. And then we have a big fireplace out here. So this is like the equivalent to the front entrance way. So it does have windows that look out, but it's also, we can block it off in the winter if we, you know, Christmas, when people are coming, we'll get the fire going in here. And, but if we don't have to heat it, then it just saves a bunch of energy because that's plenty of living space so, on the other side. So you can close this off? Yeah, just close that big door. Because this would get colder because it's not yeah. earth, earth protected. Right, I okay. mean, you know, that wall is and in behind here is, but this is certainly more open. You can see it. Yes. So it's another dining dome. Yeah. How does the house behave all along the years? So is, is it able to give you comfort no matter what weather you have outside? Yeah, if it's, you know, if there's a big storm or anything, we don't, here. you know, the only thing is if we get a big snowfall and then it gets warm, Sometimes the snow will stick on the skylights, but very rarely, because it just blows off, right? But you don't find you miss having conventional windows or no. something that you come here and no. I mean, actually from every room in the house except the bathroom, you can see outside. I mean, there's my bedroom. I can lie in there. That's a glass door. I can look out if those blinds are drawn. So we can see outside from every room. Is this a little bit like a summer room or...? or well, it's the dining room. room. This is the major dining room. At Christmas, we turn up and put on the fireplace and warm it up. And, you know, people sleep on the couches because yeah. there's room to sleep. Lots of people here. This is the only room that we do have an air conditioner if it gets really super hot. Like when my dad stayed with us one summer, he was just complaining. So we put in this air conditioner and we close off all these blinds, close that door. We can put the air conditioner on and then it'll get cooler than the other rooms. We had a little fashion show at my party of old stuff I'd made so I work with fur it's knitted and it makes a fabric that has fur on both sides when you knit it right I mean I was raised in Labrador in Goose Bay where it's cold and people wear fur next to their skin so when I saw a lady with a fur coat with a fur on the outside I said to my brother that oh, lady's got her coat on the inside out and I started knitting with leather, like this is knitted leather. Mostly I work with beaver. I'm a beaver weaver because it's very Canadian. I did a lot of export in the time that I was really active in the fur trade. Use what you got, right? A renewable resource. And beaver is a rodent. There's plenty of beaver around. And it is the softest. So let me just show you this ring shawl. <laughs> and I won the Canadian Woman Entrepreneur of the Year Award in 1995 for international competitiveness because we brought so much money into the country. This is so crocheted. Soft. It's called a hands-free shawl. So it's like a shawl, right? You put it on, you can do whatever you're doing, wash dishes, drive the car, and it, it keeps you really warm. And you can turn it into a big shawl collar and a coat, or you can make it into a skinny scarf. You know, it can be a hood. You can just wear like a big accessory piece. <laughs> How cold does it get here? We're in Celsius, so I don't know, minus 20, minus 25 Celsius, so that, that's pretty cold. But inside here, it's going to stay? Yeah, you just close that door and, you know, I mean, there is heat in the floors, as mm -hmm. I explained, so mm -hmm. it's a radiant heat, so it's very nice. This is the big bathroom. He said, I didn't know how big it was going to be. It was drawing circles on a piece of paper. So we do have, like all of the negative spaces, he was going to fill them in with gravel for, you know, to make it more solid. And I went, are you kidding? Where am I going to put all my towels? <laughs> so all these negative spaces now, you know, in between all these domes, so they've all got weird shaped walls and everything, but it's perfect for, you know, storage. storing stuff. Was the shower just sculpted in? Yeah, and the bathtub too, really, and all these cupboards, right? So we just sh shaped it in wire, and set the tub in, and then covered it with expanded metal and some concrete and uh, the um, marble. Do you need, can you repair? You can't hurt it. We do have 
like where the light is, it's hotter, so it gathers dust. Like that's really the uh -huh. biggest problem, right? Okay. So once a year we go through around with some TSP and scrub where the lights are. You can't chip it, you know, you can't put your fist through it like you could through chip rock. <laughs> you definitely break your fist. And then there's another bedroom in here. We have two mattresses here, so we can pull one down. Depends on the, how many people show up to sleep over, so, yeah. So everything's just kind of carved into the walls? Later. Yeah, the cupboards, you know, the little closet there, yeah. taken out of the space. So the, your kids grew up here? No, no, the two boys who helped build it mm -hmm. grew up in the chalet. Okay. We lived there, and then um, Carmen came quite a bit later. She's 11 years younger than the eldest, so okay. she grew up here. This was her room. But, you know, at the time that we moved in here, the boys were teenagers. They're just a couple of years apart. So we left them in the chalet. <laughs> so they were perfectly happy, though. That worked out quite well for them. They were happy. And then we have the swing. It's just totally adjustable, right? So you can, yeah. So this is a pretty big space to heat or cool, but do you help? The thing is, you know, the temperature, like we don't do anything in the summer. As I said, we have that room that we can cool down, but, but yeah, this is it's 31 degrees out, and it feels really nice in here. Yeah, it's like a basement, right? Like at my daughter's house, they sleep in the basement because it's so cool in the summer, and you go upstairs and it's like, oh, man, it's hot. <laughs> but this is really a basement because you know our feet were up there, right? So it's it's all integrated into the earth, and the earth is once you're below that 12 to 14 inches, it stays cool. And, and in the winter, how much are you heating? Is it well, not much. We only have to heat up, you know, maybe 16, 18 degrees. And of course, there's no drafts. Like, that's where you lose a lot of heat in houses, is through drafty windows and vents and things coming in. So there's nothing. And it also feels really nice. Yeah. There's something cathedral-like about... The shape, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not over your head. It makes you want to stand up taller. The white was important probably, right? Well, yeah, because it's very reflective and white, car you know, light colored carpets okay. and yeah, we wanted it to be, you know, to be bright yeah. and feel healthy. Because it's there are no lights on now, No, right? no, no. You get much more natural light from the sky. If you have a window here, you're just getting bounced light, right? Because the sun shines down and so you're getting reflected light more, whereas the skylight, you're getting pure light. Like with these circles, you can, you can watch them, follow, follow them around during the day. <laughs> because the, as the sun moves, so do the circles. There's a certain time of day you can't watch TV because it's got circles on it. <laughs> Cassie, come on. Everybody doesn't want you to jump on them all the time. No, no they don't. I never thought about skylights only would be enough. Oh yeah. But it really is. Oh yeah. It's caves, but it's bright. Caves you think of as dark, but... <gasps> Ooh. It shelters you in such a way that it's very... It's like going back to the womb, right? So your husband also did a lot of work with airplanes? Well, he's most famous, actually, for flying with birds. They made a movie about it, Columbia Pictures, called Fly Away Home. He flies ultralights. He got lonely, so he trained some birds to fly with him. And then he thought, oh, I'll take them on migration. So he flew them across the lake, Canada geese, right? And then scientists approached him and said, you know, there's problems with whooping crane. The whooping crane is highly endangered, and they used to be, have an easterly migrating flock. And so he wanted to reestablish the easterly migrating flock of the whooping cranes. He was a Leonardo. I mean, the man could build anything, fly anything, drive anything, build anything. I mean, he built his house and he built all kinds of things in his career. At one point, he got all inspired and he built this life-size replica of a lunar module. He just wanted to build it because, you know, man, it just landed on the moon. And so we went to the bank and borrowed money to buy, build a life-scale replica of the lunar module. Yeah, we were going to make a little guest suite out of it. You know, and I was earning lots of money. I mean, my business was really taking off because it was new. I mean, I really changed the whole fur trade. So, and it was great. You know, we were a great team. I got to work in the soft stuff and he's out there hammering metal and the anvil. And, you know, so we were, <laughs> we were a good contrast.
This big tower was one of the theme sculptures for Expo 86. It was transportation, the one in Vancouver. And this was the land transportation plaza. Yeah, so this is the self-portrait that was done for the IMAX movie. Good old Bill. He's supposed to look up in shock. <gasps> hmm. and, the, and the house is just covered in wildflowers. Yeah, and there's lots of grapes on the top. and. You don't see the home from this side at all? No. I mean, not even the... No. Just you can see the ventilator there, but... Mm -hmm. This is the chalet. This is where we... This was on the property when we first bought it. And we lived here with the two boys, and then we built that house. So this is Cadence's painting on my oil tank. Flying, flying over the house. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I love it. <laughs> Bill's father, Goose, who people know about him flying with the geese, and I'm the beaver weaver. Spinach is going to seed. Oh, this is my first shop. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, just a short walk to work now. It's great. At one point, we tried to put gardens up there, but you know, I got enough gardening already. Lots of vetch, and, and actually, I harvest the grapes on the roof and make jelly in the you fall. Do. Yeah. And then there's an, a door here, so you know, if I'm working in the garden, I can sleep, slide in here and go to the bathroom without taking my boots off. And you do a lot of canning. Well, I have a pretty big vegetable garden. This is really cool. This is, is cool because it doesn't no. have a skylight. It's, you know, it's a little lower, it's smaller. So this is the temperature if there were no skylights. Right. Wow. Yeah. We do have to have square stuff, so we hide it in this room. Washer, dryer, filing cabinet. Yeah. Backup fridge, freezer. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I'll bring this back. Closer, closer, closer. Be back closer. Just stop. And this is underground and is the basement. It's called Earth Integrated. There is no basement. It's all basement if you want to look at it that way. We call it earth integrated, yeah. Cool. Do you guys want any water or nuts? And then we're going to go. Before we go. It's just the feeling of this different shape, getting out of the box. And really, you know, the advantages in this country where the temperature can vary, you know, easily 100 degrees Fahrenheit from the hottest day to the coldest day. and but once you're below the frost line, it's constant temperature, and it's very easy to deal with. It's easy to bring it up if you don't lose any heat from drafts. And in the summer, you don't have to do anything. Just enjoy it.